So we'll be discussing about the ACL reconstruction and a meniscus repair case uh, of mine. So I'll directly jump onto the case. I had a 35-year-old male, uh, heavy-duty worker, had a history of twisting injury to the knee with a classical pivoting pattern three years back. At that time, uh, I had advised him to undergo a surgery uh, because of the COVID times had to postpone it. Again, twisted his knee three months back. And the poor chap on the day of admission, again, just coming prior to the surgery, went to the bathroom and had a slip and fall. Presented with a locked knee uh, in, in the OT. Uh, clinical examination had a positive Lockman and anterior drawer test with a grade one pure chip test. His uh, medial joint uh, line was tender, but the varus and valgus stress test were negative. So if we see the MRI, this was prior to his uh, frequent, uh, the immediate fall, which was just prior to the surgery. We can see that the patient had a complex tearing pattern. We can see a longitudinal component as well as a horizontal component uh, to the meniscal tear. And uh, he had ACL, which was a chronic ACL uh, injury. So uh, while doing a diagnostic arthroscopy, uh, you can see uh, he had a locked uh, medial bucket handle meniscus, and we could appreciate the acuteness of this injury as it just happened few minutes prior to the surgery. And we can also appreciate a chronicity of the ACL tear like a classical lambda sign where ACL femoral stump is attached to the ECL. He did not have any ramp lesion, but had some chondral fissuring on the lateral TBL uh, plateau. So first uh, I checked the meniscus reducibility and uh, in extension with put in external rotation and a valgus force applied could be reduced back. But I always do pie crusting. You can appreciate that the femoral and meniscal distance is increasing. I prefer to do it on the TBL side. It's an individual uh, option. Few of them uh, do on the femoral side. Uh, proceed with the meniscal preparation. Uh, first, with a 3.5 shaver in a forward or reward direction without any suction on, so that you don't end up shaving most of the capsular part. I tend to take care that I do debride the inferior capsular part, which helps in healing I sometimes do uh, needling with the, with the spinal needle also to increase the healing, but not in this case, because anyways, I was going to do an ACL in this case. I do like this Conmed meniscal grasp, which is a 90, which has a 90 degree bend, uh, a useful device. It has got a greater depth than the usual golden grasp, which comes from Smith Nephew. So this is a kind of meniscal grasp. There is a serrated edge on the superior and inferior aspect. It's a 90 degree bend. Uh, Conmed meniscal rasp, and we do get uh, several cannuli uh, for the inside out uh, meniscus repair from Conmed. I always and always do a posterior medial approach before proceeding with the inside out repair. You can just put a probe and see from where you are exiting, and then uh, just anterior to the adductor tubercle, I take my uh, approach. Be very careful that, that you're not going too far posterior to the adductor tubercle, otherwise you end up damaging the saphenous nerve and patients will have problematic parasthesia. You have to go between uh, the posterior capsule and uh, the pest in the, uh, on the anterior side and posterior you have to reflect the medial head of the gastrocnemius. So meniscal repair proceeds uh, with the first anchoring stretch, uh, usually in the center of the tear. Uh, you can use several needles. This is a technique like you have to direct your needle slightly inferiorly and try and flex the knee simultaneously so you do not endanger any vasculature there. Uh, using an inside out method while repairing a bucket handle helps you in several ways like I'm able to see, uh, show you here. You can use your cannula to reduce the meniscus back in place. You can choose where to put your needle. So it helps you mechanically stabilize the meniscus before passing the suture. And uh, it does help, at least personally, I feel it is a more secured repair uh, for the bucket handle meniscus tears. 
and simultaneously you have to be very careful that you are not tightening the sutures too much or your fellow or your assistant is not pulling on the sutures violently otherwise the meniscal uh, tissue just gets cut you can proceed with equidistant several of these sutures and you have to place your sutures properly i also prefer a longitudinal or vertical mattress rather than going for a horizontal except where i want to push the meniscus down as you can see a meniscus is flipping uh, or is inverted so as soon as i put this inferior horizontal mattress the meniscus tissue just sits down on the tibia you can sometime also use um, other devices such as the needles with tape they have a wider aperture so sometimes your meniscal tissue if it's not very good do not try and use a needle with tape is what my suggestion is sometimes it cuts through very easily you can then proceed with the posterior side with all inside devices if you want and have to stretch back the meniscus you can put in as many sutures as you require as you can get a better coverage with these needles the acl femoral and tibial sided drilling uh, comes later so this is the first uh, acl the left hand side is a recent offset guide which has a 2 mm offset from the posterior tibial or posterior femoral Uh, condyle. I prefer to use this bullseye aimer from the Cormac, which has got a wonderful shape. It sits nicely on the femoral condyle and the tibial jig. So uh, first thing comes is to debride the ACL uh, mid substance remnant or the part which is just sticking to the PCL. It always and always comes in the way when you are passing the graft. So better get rid of it. Also, you have to take and spend some time to prepare your femoral sided. Uh, ACL, especially in chronic uh, tear, as you can see, a bifurcate ridge. Do not um, mix this or uh, make your ACL tennis anterior to it, unless you are gonna go ahead with a double bundle. Then you have to make an anteromedial portal just superior to the uh, meniscal substance. You don't end. Uh, you don't damage the meniscus or the femoral condyle. Then proceed with the femoral. tunnel drilling this is the femoral aimer which i just showed you a uh, beauty of this uh, system uh, that is the infinity system is that it has got a spade tip uh, bead pin so you do not require a uh, specific depth gauge against it it has got the tip size is 3.5 and a good thing about the infinity endo button is is a, a thinner endo button uh it has got a diameter of 3.5 so you need not drill with 4.5 again after this petal drill uh, drill tip has passed as you could see in the video here you just have to pull the pin back so that you get the approx measurement of your tunnel here it was around 40 so then you proceed with the knee in hyperflexion with your femoral tunnel do not have to do the 4.5 reamer just proceed with uh your this and in this case it was 8 mm so i tend to uh, go for at least 20 to 25 mm of the femoral tunnel if you are seeing from the antero medial or the medial portal this should be the position of your femoral tunnel it shouldn't be too low if you are using a flexible uh, button or adjustable loop i'll come to it you should have at least 2 mm of posterior wall to prevent any uh, breakage there or the posterior blowouts it can endanger your acl uh, rehab as well or the graft placement then proceed with the femoral uh, tunnel drilling i tend to preserve your fibers of the acl tibial uh, footprint and then use a the acl jig uh, to come in the center of this footprint as you can see if you see on the right side it is in the center of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus then proceed with sequential drilling for your acl be very careful that you are not coming too far posteriorly when you have this bead pin in position otherwise you can end up having a pcl impingement stay away from the femoral condyle i prefer to come always and always through the substance of the native acl so that it gives you a uh, better proprioception and good collagen then pass the loop for passing of the graft this is the infinity endo button it has got uh, a wonderful functioning uh, blue button which you have 
it has been already discussed uh, in the uh, prior talk. You can pull the graph with the help of this. If you have excess graph in the femoral side, and if you want more on the TBL side, the thread which is marked by blue is the one which you use for pulling of the graft inside the tunnel. You have to mark the graft. So for, from the endo button or the button side, then you have to mark the total femoral tunnel side. That is the first mark. If you want to have around 20 or 25 uh, uh, millimeters of the graph, you have to mark that as well on the graph. The infinity button passage is a very vital aspect of the passage. Passage as is, it is important in all adjustable loops because you don't want that button to be sitting out on the IT band or on the vastus. So it is very important to go and see in the tunnel that you have a tunnel on tunnel view like this and then pass your button so that you are seeing the button under vision going out of this second tunnel that is a smaller tunnel and flipping on the outer side. I prefer to do it myself rather than asking an assistant or your fellow to pull it. Sometimes if they pull more violently, you will end up having the endo button outside. So you can see a nicely uh, flipped uh, infinity button there with a mark on the uh, edge of the femoral socket. So it clarifies that we have done a proper and a proper infinity button placement. And then you can start pulling the graph. One more important thing is as you want to avoid having an endo but or infinity button or adjustable loop outside your uh, tunnel sitting on a uh, IT band or vastus, there are several studies, uh, studies which have been published. I like this paper, so just mentioning the one published in 2014. If you are going to posterior, <clears throat> and if your button is sitting posterior to the lateral supracondylar fish, there are more chances that your button will migrate, not only interop, but there are chances that almost 9.8% of your buttons will migrate later, that is late migration of these buttons. Because you have more soft tissues on the posterior side, uh, it can lead to late slippage of these buttons. So try and avoid too far posterior placement of your uh, drills on the femoral side, if, especially if you are using an adjustable loop. <clears throat> then you can pass the graft using uh, the pulling thread. That is a blue thread. You can see a nicely uh, positioned graft going in. <clears throat> then cycle the knee subsequently. and with a posterior draw, you tension and tighten the graph on the TBL side and with a TBL fixation device such as a Genesis matrix screw. I sometimes tend to use um, additional fixations on the TBL side since it's a soft tissue graph. So gra final graph positioning, you can see a blue thread which I tend to cut and I hardly had any need to pull the graph down again because if your calculations are good on the TBL side, you hardly have to do it. So like uh, Dr. Sheetal said, probably in the PCL, it has got major advantage. I always proceed with bracing, long knee brace for two weeks at least, and then ACL range of motion brace for these patients. Cryotherapy is my uh, way to go for managing the pain. I keep patients non bed bearing for four weeks at least, and then proceed with partial and full weight bearing. I do not uh, go for aggressive knee range of motion in these patients. Uh, proceed with 0 to 60 degrees only for first four weeks. And then gradually as they are doing uh, the uh, physiotherapy, they proceed with further flexion. And the physiotherapy always involves the static quadriceps and hamstring strengthening from day one itself. Thank you, everybody.